Okay, so I'm excited to talk about the second part about rebuilding the microbiome after the use of antibiotics. Uh, we talked already a little bit about the nutritional aspect. The foods. Yeah, the foods, the foods that we can eat uh, in a past video. And we left this not quite fully attended to. We want to make sure we close the gap, close the loop. Before we do that, though, why are antibiotics actually a good thing? Why is that something we need sometimes? Well, the first thing to remember is antibiotics are not a four-letter word. Right? Mm -hmm. They're not bad for you. Bad antibiotics or excessive antibiotics are bad for you. That antibiotics have saved millions and millions of lives. And if you need an antibiotic, you take the antibiotic. And But what's real important if you're taking it, if you decide to take it, is that you take it for the full prescription. Mm -hmm. Because when you take a capsule, it's going in there to kill off the bad guys. And as you now know, it also kills off the good guys. But the problem is the good guys kind of get wiped out first. The bad guys, you know, they're, they're, they got more <laughs> muscle. There's not many of them because there's billions of good guys and not too many of the bad guys. But there's enough that they've caused a problem. Mm -hmm. But there's so much more of the good guys. So when you take the antibiotics, first couple of days, you're more or less wiping out most of the good guys. Mm -hmm. If you stop because you feel a little better, Mm -hmm. And you, you don't do the 10 day prescription. If your doctor recommended it for 10 days, you do three days and you, I'm feeling better. I'm not going to take it anymore. What you've done is wiped out most of the army, keeping the bad guys more or less in check. Ah. And so now the bad guys can really rear their ugly head because part of what the good guys do, the good bacteria, is they inhibit the growth of the bad guys. Now they've not done a good enough job because you're sick and you need a prescription. Mm -hmm. But they're doing somewhat of a job. They've not all run away. Mm -hmm. But when you take the antibiotics for the first few days, they've all run away. The good guys have run away in a sense. You've wiped them out. So it's really important, and this is a key point, because I, I think I've probably been guilty of maybe stopping before the full term of the yeah. antibiotic. You're suggesting that's a really bad idea. It is. It is. And that's one of the contributors to the vast increase in antibiotic-resistant bacteria that we have today. You know, I don't remember what year it was. I didn't pay attention. It was maybe 1994, 96. And I read of the first case of a boy in Chicago, in a hospital in Chicago, that died of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. And I said, oh, that's too bad, but I know it's coming down the pike. Sure enough, the next year there were over 100 in Chicago, and then there were over a few thousand the next year. Now it's so prevalent that it's not uncommon in every hospital around the world, antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we want to do, and we should actually do a video on that in the future, you know, <laughs> but one of the things is if you have to take antibiotics, you take them for the full course mm -hmm. and you do the preventive things to help rebuild and all that that we're going to talk about, but don't stop early. Right. Okay. So we know antibiotics have their place. They've saved millions of lives. And when you need them, you do what your doctor tells you to do. Absolutely. Full term of the prescription. Okay. I've gone through all that, and now I know my microbiome is shut. Right. It is shut. It has basically been, been shut down. Shut. Right? Exactly right. You can count on it. You can count on it that that's happened. And we talked already about the, the foods that can help with that, but we left, it up, uh, left out the conversation about what supplements and other things might we do. So, Dr. Tom, if you would mind, let's close this loop for everybody that watched our first video, and even if you didn't, what supplements can really make a difference? What other foods or food substances could we do to really rebuild our microbiome after the antibiotics? You bet. Um, uh, when I came out in practice, we opened our practice on Valentine's Day in 1980. That's a it loving was, thing to do. It was a nice day. Nice. Right, it was a really nice day. And uh, back then we knew that you give the good bacteria, the probiotics, Mm -hmm. And back then, there were two big families of probiotics, lactobacillus and bifidobacteria. Mm -hmm. Those were the two big families, and if you had a really good antibiotic, it had lactobacillus and bifidobacteria in it. Well, now we know there are thousands of good, good bacteria, different families of good bacteria in your gut. There are thousands. And so you don't want to take just lactobacillus and bifidobacteria. Mm -hmm. It's good to take them because they're important. But now we know it's the diversity that's critically important, that you have a diversity in your microbiome, not just a whole lot of lactobacillus or a whole lot of bifido. So what we're saying is to clarify, 
just one probiotic will not get the job done. It will do partial job, but not complete job. Mm -hmm. So you want the, that's why you're doing the fermented vegetables and the stewed apples and all of that is to help with the uh, uh, big picture overview, feeding the good bacteria. And, and that's something you can do all the time, right? That's absolutely. a ongoing maintenance. Thing. Absolutely, right. absolutely. So the um, the supplements to take, it's really it's important to take supplements of the good bacteria. They do help, but you want the diversity. You want as many different types of good bacteria as possible. Mm -hmm. And there are products out there that will have four, uh, five, six, ten different types of probiotics in them. The uh, product on the doctor.com on our site has five different types of probiotic bacteria in them. And I picked them because of the benefits of what they do. And every probiotic has a little bit of a different benefit. It has mm -hmm. a, you know, it's like the Lance Corporal of the Marines is different than the captain in the Air Force. You right. Know, but you, you need them all. You need them right. all. So when you choose a probiotic, make sure that there's a number of different types of bacteria in there. One of the common ones that's been, um, has some really good research behind it is called VSL number three, Victory Sam Larry number three. I just made the name up. That's VSL not, number three. Right, that's okay. not what VSL stands for, but that's, a, that's one that if your doctor doesn't carry probiotics in the office, if you don't have a relationship with a high quality health food store, and uh, you're, all you have available is the local drugstore. Um, now, not saying anything against drugstores, because if it's a compounding pharmacy drugstore, mm -hmm. they're really sharp guys and they're gonna carry high quality products. But as is true in everything that you buy, some of the stuff out there is junk mm -hmm. and some of it's really good. So mm -hmm. how can you ensure really good? Well, you talk to a nutritionist or a registered dietitian mm -hmm. or your doctor who is trained in nutrition so they know, they, they should know which companies have really better product. They should know that. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing is the family of probiotics to take. And the big lesson there is to make sure that it's not just one or two, but Correct. rather a wide spectrum. Correct. Because, because we know that one single particular strain, or what would you call it? Strain. One particular strain is only going to do a partial. Mm -hmm. So if we want to do a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, we need five, six, eight, ten different ones. Exactly right. You know, so and if all you've got is Lance Corporals in the Marines, that's yeah. great, but it's not protecting the airspace. Right. You, know? right, you, you need right. the Air Force. Right. Right. So you, right. you want the variety. So a variety of probiotics. That's one. Second one is um, we hear about eating meat. Uh, and for those that eat meat, you hear that grass-fed beef is healthier for you than corn-fed beef. Mm -hmm. That's really true. There's no question about it. The reason is cows eat grass. When they eat the grass, they have two stomachs. And one of the reasons they have two stomachs is in the breakdown of the grass, they take the chlorophyll that's in the, in the grass and they convert it to this um, kind of fat called conjugated linoleic acid, CLA. Mm -hmm. Grass-fed beef is high in CLA. Mm -hmm. Corn-fed beef is very low in CLA. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? CLA helps your body use cholesterol better in a more healthier way. And CLA contributes to building the good bacteria in your gut that keep your weight down. Ah. So when you look at studies about obesity and the microbiome, and you look for CLA, people that take CLA build a healthier microbiome, the good bacteria in your gut, and lose weight. Wow. That's what the first study I saw on this was about 14, 13, 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. And you take CLA, in one year, you lose a pound a month. Not changing your diet in any way at all, but just by taking CLA in a year, you've lost 12 pounds. Wow. That, that was the average. Mm -hmm. So CLA is a uh, type of fat that is food for good bacteria. Uh -huh. And we can get it eating grass-fed beef. You can get if it. If you happen to eat meat. If you eat beef, always make sure it's grass-fed as much as you can because that's unlikely to have the antibiotics in it or the growth hormones. It's going to be a healthier beef. But CLA is also a supplement that mm -hmm. you can take. So you can take CLA for a number of reasons. If you're wanting to lose weight, 
It's helpful. It's not the sure cure. I'm going to lose all this weight. No, uh, but you will lose like a pound a month or so just as you build the good bacteria. Because what the bacteria is doing is building the balance in your gut between those bacteria that hoard calories mm -hmm. and those bacteria that burn up calories. Mm -hmm. And CLA contributes to the bacteria that helps you burn up calories and not store calories. Interesting. Wow, that's, that's great. It's really great. Weight it's, loss tip thrown in just for good measure. Exactly right. All right. Exactly right. Okay. The next CLA. one. The next one. Um, there is a uh, uh, product. Uh, it's, uh, it comes from some herbs. It's called berberine. It's been known in Chinese medicine for thousands of years. Hmm. Berberine has been used as an antiparasitic and antibacterial and antifungal. Uh, many holistically oriented doctors use berberine as a component to strengthen the immune system to fight whatever you're fighting. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that berberine, and it's safe to take berberine on a regular basis a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit is fine. One of the things that berberine does is it contributes to the good bacteria in your gut that fights obesity mm -hmm. and the good bacteria in your gut that helps you balance your blood sugar. Mm. So, so type two diabetes, diabetics, yeah. type two diabetics, they do much better, need less medication, have more stable blood sugar months after they've started taking berberine. Ah, wow. And that helps rebuild the microbiome. That's, that's why it helps with diabetes is it rebuilds the microbiome. So now you have the bacteria in your gut that help you keep balanced blood sugar utilization. Wow. What you're learning is that the bacteria in your gut are critical to so many functions in the body. Just mm -hmm. critical, mm -hmm. critical. So here's berberine helping to build the good bacteria to keep your blood sugar stable. Wow. Okay. So, so after you've taken antibiotics, you want to take some berberine and mm -hmm. some CLA. And some probiotics. And some probiotics. And what else? Vitamin D. Vitamin D. Vitamin D. Vitamin D is the fuel for so many different families of good bacteria in your gut. There are hundreds of benefits to vitamin D. You know, I've talked before, I think, about receptor sites. Mm -hmm. A receptor site's like a catcher's mitt, the right. pitcher throws the ball to the catcher. There's only two substances for which there are receptor sites on every cell of your body. Every cell. That means every cell of your body needs those two substances. Mm -hmm. One of them is thyroid hormone. Mm -hmm. Why? Because thyroid hormone is the thermostat on the wall that controls the temperature in the room. Mm -hmm. And that inside your cell, that's called your metabolism. Mm -hmm. Thyroid hormone controls your metabolism, how hot the cells work. And just like in your house at home, you know, at night, you turn the heat down so that you save fuel. In the morning, it turns on automatically mm -hmm. before you wake up so the house is warm again. That's what the thermostat does. Thyroid hormone does that. That's why there's a receptor site for thyroid hormone on every cell of your body because you have to control how hot the cell works, right? Mm -hmm. The other receptor site that's on every cell of your body is vitamin D. It's the only other thing. No other hormone, mm. no other nutrition, no other mineral, no other protein, in, no receptor sites on every cell of your body, just thyroid and vitamin D. Wow. So vitamin D contributes to the good bacteria, building stronger families of the good bacteria in your gut. Mm -hmm. That's another benefit. And Antibiotics. it's been wiped out by the antibiotics. So That's now right. we do the same thing. Okay. That's so right. we have probiotics, CLA. Wait, 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 wait. Correct. Vitamin D has not been wiped out by the antibiotics, but the bacteria has been wiped out by the antibiotics. Ah, got so, it. So you want to take some extra vitamin D. We all should be taking some vitamin D every day, all of us. That's the one nutrient. Anyone asks me, what should I take every day? I said, well, of course, bottom line is vitamin D. Because right. every cell in your body needs it. And then, depending on your health, there are other things. But that's uh, so it's not that vi uh, antibiotics wipe out your vitamin D levels. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a study on that. It may, but I, I'm not aware of that. But what it does is it wipes out the good bacteria. Uh, antibiotics wipe out the good bacteria. So vitamin D will help, con contributes to rebuilding the good families. Got it. So we got probiotics, CLA, berberine, vitamin D. Anything else? One last thing that I found some studies on that really caught my attention, and that was POM, P-O-M, you know, the mm -hmm. pomegranate juice. Pomegranate juice. Pomegranate wow. juice. Uh, when you drink pomegranate juice, you rebuild the good bacteria in your gut that help with obesity. Really? So once again, lose weight. Mm -hmm. Lose weight with that one. So we've got, actually, berberine helps to lose weight, CLA helps to lose weight, and 
palm or pomegranate juice helps to lose weight. Right. So when you have balanced, do, do you get the hidden message there? When you have a balanced microbiome, you don't gain a lot of weight, right? Right. Because if you're eating a bunch of garbage food, you don't have a balanced microbiome automatically. Right. So when they take people that have packed, they're packing a spare tire around their midsection and they give them uh, berberine, they start to lose weight. When they give them CLA, they start to lose weight. Why? Because they're not attracted to eating all the garbage to feed the bad bacteria anymore. Mm -hmm. So that makes a lot of sense. And on a personal note for myself, being on this journey with you, uh, how would, would it be fair to say that that's why I have watched myself just shed pounds without going on a diet? It's exactly right. Uh, there, there's two Which, mechanisms. By the way, I appreciate that. Thank you for that. Oh, well, really really I appreciate that. that. <laughs> there's, there's two mechanisms. One is you're losing the water retention because you're not having to dilute the toxic foods that you are eating. Mm -hmm. So there's less water retention. But two, you're changing your microbiome. Mm -hmm. And the microbiome that helps burn calories is becoming more dominant. Mm -hmm. And the microbiome that helps you store calories is becoming less dominant. Mm -hmm. So part of recovery after antibiotics actually leads to even a healthier microbiome and contributes to losing weight. Exactly right. Because you're balancing out the whole system. Exactly right. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Dr. Tom, for sharing that with all of you. Did you guys catch that? You got the extra weight loss tips in there also from Dr. Tom. So please take advantage of that. Listen to your doctor. Be sure to take the full prescription of antibiotics when needed and rebuild right after that. Lose some weight in the process. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you.